If you clicked on this video, thank you. I appreciate it. I also really love you for doing it. Now, obviously, this video has been done before. That's where I got my inspiration from, is people have already done this before. Uh, TGG and Harmnon, I believe they're the two people that I know have done it. I don't know if anyone else has. But I wanted to do this because I thought it would be fun. I thought about doing this way, way before I even started doing my GTA videos again. But I thought this was kind of overwhelming. I was like, how do I do this? I don't know how to approach this. But in front of me, I have a Google Doc of all the businesses rank i've already ranked them from worst all the way to the best baby they possibly can be and if you're seeing me look over here it's because i'm looking at obs so i'm not trying to like look away from you guys you're got you guys are right here obs right here that's pretty cool there is four businesses that i actually will not have ranked because it's kind of hard for me to rank them and also i didn't mention this yet but the way i'm ranking these is how good they are at giving you money like how good are they at generating money and i'm also basing it around solo players so some of these businesses that i'm not going to mention you can't really do anything with them as a solo player because they're kind of just impossible to do as a solo player they're really super inconsistent if you have to have people help you that you don't know now i don't really have anything else to say so let's go ahead and move on to the first business now the worst business i could possibly think of in this game is the arena now all the arena has going for it is that you can have fun i guess with it the only way it can make money is by doing the arena war like missions i guess i, I don't know if they're missions or not or what they are i know they're classified as missions but nobody ever do does them any but nobody ever does them anyway like it's just kind of a dead game mode no one ever wants to do them because they're just not fun anymore you're really not going to make any money i don't have gameplay of an arena war mission because i really don't have any arena cars anyway so i couldn't really do it even if i wanted to but yeah this is the arena coming dead last i don't really want to talk about it anymore so let's go to move on to the next business now right after that which barely makes it past the arena is a document forgery office now i don't even have this business going i think it got raided and i really didn't care this business is so so terrible now, the reason why this business is so bad is is not only is it expensive to get all the upgrades, but it makes you like no profit at all, barely any. And if you're a solo player, when you buy supplies, it'll almost fill up the product bar completely. So when you go to sell it, you'll have like three vehicles probably. It's gonna be almost impossible to even do the mission bear. So now, there really isn't much to say about it because it's just buy supplies, sell, that's it. As a solo player, it is a terrible business. Even if you have people to help you, don't buy it, please. It's a waste of time. Now, right after that, uh, it's two more MC businesses. I'm going to count, kind of count them together because they're both really similar and they're both really terrible. Now, the two I'm making together is going to be the tree factory and the fake money factory. I don't know if I can say them on a YouTube video, so I don't actually want to say the real name. But both of these businesses are very similar to the last one. You buy supplies and they generate money. The problem with this is that they really make you no profit at all. It's hardly any profit. When you buy supplies and generate profit, it makes a lot of product. And when it makes all that product, you won't have enough time to actually sell the vehicles. If you get unlucky, the missions are literally gonna be impossible. There's gonna be absolutely no way to complete them, which is, is terrible if you ask me. And moving on to the next one is gonna be the penthouse. Now it's kind of hard to count this as a business because it's more of a property to just have instead of a way to make money. Now you can make money with this, because of the Agatha Baker missions, they can make up to a million once you do them all in order and do all the challenges and all that for them. But after you do that, you're not really making money with it at all. I mean, you can play blackjack. It unlocks the blackjack tables in the casino. That's all it really does. And they're really expensive too. I bought the most expensive one, 6.5 million. Don't ask me why I did that because I don't have I don't have any. Now, this business used to be very, very terrible. This one, honestly, would have probably ranked at the bottom below the arena because it was just the biggest waste of time. But this is going to be the hanger. It actually got a major buff, like a pretty big buff. Not, not, I wouldn't say massive. I would say that the buff is pretty significant. Now, before when you were solo and you sourced, you got one crate at a time and that crate was only ten thousand dollars and the missions can be like all the way up to 30 minutes long now, the only reason you'd really do these is to unlock the trade price for the um different planes and helicopters that came with this update and i know what i was saying before that this this uh, hangar got an upgrade whatever now, the upgrade is instead of the crates being ten thousand dollars each they're thirty thousand dollars each which still isn't really like that good now the major problem with this business is that the missions are just so terrible it's really hard to even make this business good because if you for instance make the crates like fifty thousand each it's gonna give um people that actually have four people to do this with way too much money way too quickly it's gonna be kind of overpowered so this this is just kind of a messed up and hard business to even run because the missions are so terrible now the next two are also gonna 
going to be MCU businesses. One of them being uh, the Crystal Factory and one of them being the Powder Lockup, if you catch my drift. Now, if you're doing the uh, Crystal Factory, when you buy supplies for that, it'll generate about two bars of product dish. And during that time, it produces the product, make you about 100,000 profit. Now, once you sell this, you'll get a max of two vehicles. No matter what missions you get, they'll be doable as a solo player. The only problem is that they can be really long or they can be really short because you can get only one vehicle. Now, it's really similar with the, the Powder Lockup. It's pretty much the exact same thing. You just buy supplies, generates two bars, and I believe it gives you more. You can sell it for like 200,000. I don't exactly know how much, but it makes you a little bit more profit. And same thing, you can sell it, you can get max at two vehicles, and it could take you a long time, but it's very doable as a solo player. Now, next up, these two can be really interchangeable depending on what kind of person you are, but I have cargo warehouses next. And then after that is vehicle warehouse. But going over the cargo warehouse first, this one is honestly a pretty W business. Now, I, the way it works is you can either go into terabyte, you can go in the arcade and the master terminal, or you can go in your office and source crates. You source one to three crates at a time, or you can get a special item, depending if you're lucky. Now, these crates can be pretty annoying as a solo player. If you do three crates, you might get three separate crates instead of one vehicle. So you have to go get a crate, go back to your warehouse, go get a crate, go back to your warehouse and do that until you have all the crates. Now, the good part about this is you get a lot of RP. This is actually, I believe, the fastest way to actually getting levels in the game is doing cargo warehouse missions. Now, in the recent update, in the Criminal Enterprises update, they made a change where you can actually go inside your warehouses and you can go up to this little technician guy and you can have them source crates. They can source up to one to three crates at a time or they can even get a special item if you're lucky. It's not super consistent. I wouldn't say that you should rely on these guys for crates or whatever, but... You know, they're kind of nice. You can just go to your warehouse, pay 7500 for them to go get some crates, and just do other stuff. It's actually very, very convenient. Now, moving on to vehicle warehouses, I'd say, in my opinion, I enjoy this more as a solo player because I like driving around. That's just my personal preference. Now, for this, you go to your, you know, terabyte, master terminal in your arcade, CEO office, doesn't matter. You source a car, and you go get that car. Some of the missions can be bad, like the one with the cargo bob. None of them are going to be super, super difficult. All of them are fairly easy. Some of them, you have enemies chasing you, which can be annoying. Other times, you just might have to just go straight to your warehouse you know you, it depends on your luck now once you arrive to your vehicle warehouse in the vehicle that you sourced you might have to pay some damages as you see i had to pay some damages because the enemy chasing me they were shooting my car a little bit but after that you're able to sell a vehicle pay twenty thousand if you get a top range car and you get eighty thousand profit from it now the reason this is as high as it is now is because they added a high demand bonus for the vehicles and what that means is if you are in a public session and you sell a top range car every player that is in that session will add 2% profit on top of that 100k you'll get at the end. So you can earn up to like 150,000, I believe. So instead of paying 20,000 to get 80,000 profit, or technically paying 20,000 and getting 100,000 back, I'll pay 20,000 and get 150,000 back, which is, you know, pretty good if, if I had to say it is one of the better businesses because it's really simple. Now, another thing about the vehicle warehouse, if you don't know, if you store 10 standard and 10 mid ranges in your warehouse and don't sell them, just have them there and just keep them there, you'll only get top range cars. So if you didn't know that, there you go. And next is the bunker. This business, I was kind of not sure where to put it because it can be good, it can be bad. Depends on who you are, I guess. Uh, but the bunker, you buy supplies for it and you just wait. It's like the MC businesses that I mentioned earlier. This one's a lot better because when you buy supplies and you let it generate, that one batch of supplies you got, 75,000 turns into 210,000. And once you sell it, you'll always get one vehicle. The hardest mission you could possibly get is the dune buggy, as I think I got on the screen now. I can't remember what I got, but the worst you can get is the dune buggy five deliveries it's annoying but you can get it done solo it's always going to be one vehicle it's really nice and next up this was going to be one of the businesses i couldn't really rank that well as a solo player it's going to be the arcade but i actually figured out there's a really really good thing about the arcade as a solo player now the arcade has a safe in it where if you fully if you completely fill up your arcade with arcade machines i think it's 35 machines i believe you'll get five thousand dollars in your safe every 48 minutes and that goes all the way up to a hundred thousand so i'd say that you know it it's pretty good because you don't do anything and you just get five thousand dollars it just keeps generating until you get up to 100k it's pretty nice but it's not good way of making money i guess i don't know but once you go down in the bottom 10 car garage you know whatever uh there's also the diamond casino heist which is the reason i didn't want to include this because you can't do it as a solo player and getting a random would be terrible i didn't want to rank it based off the heist but i realized it has the master terminal if you don't know what that is the arcade you spend about 1.4 million on the master terminal and you have access to every business in the game in one one spot it's not limited to any business it's all businesses across the game except for one which was recently 
recently added, I believe, but you can do your air freight cargo, MC businesses, vehicle cargo, cargo warehouse, everything I mentioned before. You can do it here. It's so convenient. Now, next is the auto shop. This one isn't super, super good with making money, but it has so many benefits that I had to include it here above the arcade. And I think it's the top five. Yeah, top five. Now, the first thing you'd notice when you get in your arcade is that there is vehicles you can customize in there if you bought the shop for it. I don't know if you have to buy the customization shop or whatever, but there's vehicles in there for customers. You design them how they want it. And you can either have your technicians deliver it or you deliver it. I believe this can earn you anywhere from 20 to 50,000 per car. If you have a technician deliver it, they won't pay full price because, you know, technicians are broken. They can't drive apparently. But after that, if you go upstairs, you'll realize there's a heist board. It's not really a heist board, but they're like mini heists. They're kind of like missions you can do to earn a, a good amount of cash. Now, as you see, there's one I have 300,000 for unit depository that is the best mission you can get for 300,000 for like 20 30 minutes that's how long it takes to do these they're not super hard I wouldn't say any of them particularly hard because I haven't really done any of them to be honest but after that you'll notice to your right there's also a board with a list of cars it's 10 cars it's called the exotic list now this what it is is on the map sometimes blue dots will spawn and if you find them if you go up to them sometimes they can be cars and this is part of the auto shop once you get the auto shop you can sometimes get these cars that spawn on the map and what you do with these is you get in them and you drive to the docks once you get to the docks and deliver the car you'll get twenty thousand dollars and you'll get some reputation bonus towards um the ls tuners thing i don't really know what you call it but that's always nice now the best part about the auto shop i know i said that this is based around how good you can make money but the auto shop also has a feature where if you buy the customization shop with it i think it's an extension it's I think it's an extension towards it. I don't know if it just comes with it. Any low level that buys the auto shop can customize their car to as much as they want. You'll have everything unlocked. Doesn't matter what level you are. If you have the auto shop, you're good. The only thing you don't have unlocked is the track tires, I believe, like the bottom ones. We have to get a certain reputation level in the LS car meet, which kind of sucked because those tires are good. I don't really have anything else to say for the auto shop. That's kind of it. Now, moving on to the business that was recently added, it's the Acid Lab. Now, I was a little disappointed when they added this because it's not really anything new. It's a location you can can't change or pick and it's a vehicle that they use that they just customized it now i don't really have a problem with that too much um i do just find it a little disappointing they couldn't you know make something new for the acid lab but the inside of it was also very weird when i first went inside the acid lab truck i guess we'll say i didn't even know how to exit i couldn't even find the exit door which is kind of funny but you know whatever but anyway the main part of the acid lab is that it is a solo business it's like the mc businesses except you'll always have the same vehicle you can upgrade it it's a bike that is fast it has an infinite wheelie and the missions you get are always super easy you can complete them in like five to ten minutes super super easy missions not only that inside the acid lab truck you can also double the speed of the acid lab itself so it'll produce twice as fast you can do this every time like the daily objectives change in gta so for me i think it's like one in the morning you can do it again you don't have to wait a full 24 hours i'm pretty sure of that but i don't think there's anything else i have to say about the acid lab i think i pretty much covered everything but let me know if I miss anything. Now, next up is the nightclub. Now, there's two two main things that make you money in this. It's one, the safe, and two, the underground area where all the stuff generates, all the cargo and all that. Now, the safe is actually really easy to manage. If you keep their popularity bar, the bottom right, up to five bars all the time, it'll generate $50,000 every 48 minutes, I believe, and that goes all the way up to 250000 So, if you keep your popularity up, which is a very easy thing to do, you'll make 50000 every 48 minutes, which is honestly a very, very good thing. It generates pretty quick. Quickly. Now moving on to the main part of the nightclub, which is the cargo area. Now on the computer here, you see I have all five technicians. Cost about like a million, I think, to get all of them, and I have them all assigned here to the right things. So, if you're wondering what to assign your technicians to, assign them to all these. And once you do that, it'll generate about a hundred thousand dollars every hour. I think that might be wrong. I don't know. That's just from what I know from another video. Could be wrong about that. The reason the nightclub is so good is because it's all on its own. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to buy supplies or anything. It generates everything by itself. It's completely passive. And once you're doing everything else like in the background, the nightclub will generate so much so quickly that once you go check it, you'll probably realize that like 700k, 800k, 900k, even maybe a million. This can go all up to 2.5 million, which I personally haven't gotten it to max before because I'm too impatient. But honestly, I'd say nightclub is a must have, but you need a lot of businesses in order to make this thing actually work and a lot of money. Now coming in a second place, spot for the best business in my opinion is the Kasaka. Technically not a business but it gives you access to one of the best things in the game which is Kao Perico. Now Kao Perico was heavily nerfed as, as, as everyone knows. As a solo player it really screwed you over. When you complete Kao Perico heist solo it's about a three hour cooldown. I think it's like two hours and 30 
or 40 minutes. It's terrible. But that isn't the part that really bothers me that much because since they did that, you're able to actually go do other things. It encourages you to do other things. And that really got me back into GTA because I'm not constantly doing KO because KO feels like the only way to make money when it wasn't nerfed. But the problem I have is that they made it even harder. Not only did they nerf it and make it a super long cooldown, but they made the guards on the actual island themselves super overpowered. Like you can't even kill one guy without almost being spotted. And before you can just go on a rampage and kill everybody and they wouldn't really target you or be alerted or anything. Now, I'd still say this is a really, really good business because once KO is actually active and you can do it, you can literally do it within an hour and make about like 1.2 to 1. like six or 7 million, which is really, really, really good if you actually know what to do. I have a video on uh, how to actually do all the preps and stuff. So make sure, make sure you go check that out if you don't know. It's a really good video. I go really in depth with everything you need to know. I have another video on the actual heist itself that shows you the path on how to get the elite challenge, how to get the most money, but that one is outdated. So if you actually go to that video, I'm sorry, but that one won't work anymore. But anyway, moving on, there isn't much else to say, but Kasaka, I kind of went over everything. It's mainly KO Perico. Everyone watching this should really know what KO Perico is or heard about it and know that it's a really, really good heist. Moving on to the best business, in my opinion, you could argue that Kasaka is actually better, but I'd say the agency is the best business in this entire game. The good thing about the agency is that it has a safe, which can generate up to $20,000 every 48 minutes but that's very dependent on how many security contracts you'll have done. And I'll get to that later. Now, if you go on a computer in your agency, you'll notice there's two things, security contracts and VIP contract. Now I'm going over the VIP contract real quick. Now the VIP contract, there is three different like sections of missions for it. And each of those has a free mode mission and two actual missions that you go into and all that and start and whatever. Now they're not really hard. I also have a video on that. Go check that out, please. It's really good. Put a lot of effort into it. So it's really not that hard, but after you do all those like nine missions you see on screen, there's two extra ones at the end. And once you do all that, you'll get a million at the end. It could take like an hour to an hour and a half, depending how fast you are. And on top of that, you also have security contracts. Security contracts, they're not hard, but some of them can take upwards of 10 minutes if you get some some of the you know longer ones they can make you from anywhere from like 30 to like 70k per mission which you know it isn't a whole lot but if you keep doing them they will build up over time pretty good and also going back to the safe you have to complete 201 security contracts in order to receive 20,000 every 48 minutes in the safe so every mission you do for security contracts adds additional $500 added to your safe every 48 minutes if that makes any sense to you but that is a lot of grinding 201 security contracts is a lot of playing time now you still might think is that Kasaka actually actually better or was the agency better? Well, here's the key factor in that. Another thing the agency has is payphone hits. Payphone hits are very, very, very good. All you do is call Franklin, request a payphone hit, and once you find the payphone hit on your map, you go to it, and if you do the mission exactly how it says, like for me, I got one where it says, pick up the guy in a taxi and blow him up in a gas station explosion. Once you do exactly what it says, you get $85,000, and it takes like anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending which one you get. I also have a video on payphone hits. Go check that out if you need your help. It's not like crazy, crazy good, but every 20 minutes 85k so let me put this perspective for you guys so about every three and a half hours or so you're able to do one ko perico and then do another one on top of that so in about three and a half hours you can complete two ko pericos so that's about i'd say anywhere from 2.4 to like 3 million ish now that that might be like well agency can't be that good can it well if you think about it if you complete the vip contract in the agency in about an hour you can do it back to back i don't believe there is a cooldown on it if i remember right so if you do it as fast as you can you can complete about three vip contracts in the time it takes to do two ko pericos if you don't have the cooldown between each if you do one ko perico and you wait for the cooldown for the next one in that time gap you'll be able to do about three vip contracts if you're fast so that's three million you might be like well the two ko's they add up to like three million too so what's your point the point being is that it also has headphone hits and security contracts on top of that so if you just grind the agency do the vip contracts three million in about three hours four hours and doing the payphone hits and security contracts on top of that you can make an additional like 500k 600k 700 maybe even a million if you're really good about it so yeah there you go four million in about three four hours now obviously that's kind of a little over exaggeration because you have to be really quick but still if you think about it agency is just better because it has more things has more variety has more options and you can make a million every hour. So there you go. Now, at the beginning, I told you that there was four things that I didn't actually rank in this. Because as a solo player, they don't really make sense. Now, first is the CEO office. The only thing the CEO office offers you is...
the mixed goods you could sell from your assistant. Now that'll give you 50,000 every time you deliver the truck. Now I don't really see that as a business. I see it more as like a side mission kind of. So that's why I didn't rank it. And the CEO office is more meant to like branch off and do other businesses. You use it as a way to get other businesses to make money. You don't really use the office itself to make money. The next is the MC Clubhouse. Now the MC Clubhouse can be counted as a business because there's multiple ways to use it to make money. But I personally have never seen the Clubhouse as a way to make money. I don't really see it as a business. I see it as same as the office use it to get other businesses now clubhouse it also has like a safe thing but instead it's called club earnings or whatever you're gonna have to keep like a your supply bar full i don't know how much you make it every 48 minutes because i don't really care about that because it's just too hard to manage on top of everything else you will also have like the biker missions i can't really remember what they're called on top of my head right now but they're not really that good i think the best one will give you like 70k but you need two people for that so it doesn't really matter so they're not super good and on top of that you also have the bike customization but you need the bike auto shop in order to customize those bikes and you deliver those to customers you design them like how i mentioned in the auto shop earlier customize them to how the customer wants it when you deliver it i believe it's always forty thousand profit you pay ten thousand to customize it you get fifty thousand back man that was a lot of talking so yeah i don't see the clubhouse as a business and the next two things is high-end apartments and facilities the only two things that these two offer so the high-end apartments only offer the original heists which are you know really not good for today's standards they really don't give any money i know they were buffed in the criminal enterprises and so is a facility but the original heist just don't add up they cannot give you enough money because they are so hard to do if you don't have the right people it's so much effort just for money you could have made doing other things that are much easier same with the facility you have to do preps and then setups and once you actually do the heist itself it's just not worth it all the time and effort you spent doing those preps and setup could have been doing something else and made more money in the meantime on top of that you need to you know two people and I, I don't have two people and i don't want to do it random either so that's gonna be the list i believe if i miss anything uh let me know i don't think i did because i went through the list of updates and i just remembered everything so yeah uh let me know in the comments what your like top five is your favorite businesses what the best businesses the top three you have you know whatever and if you enjoyed leave a like please subscribe turn on the bell notification it really helps all right peace